Hi, welcome to the breadboard. In my previous video introducing motion control and the build of my 3D printers that we're going to go through over the next few months, I talked about using lead screws for driving all of the axes and quite a few comments came back to me trying to state that lead screws would not be as good as belts because they wouldn't be able to drive at the same speed, they wouldn't be able to produce the same kind of torque, the motors would have issues and all sorts of things like that. So what I want to do in this video is go through some of the differences between using a lead screw or even just a simple threaded rod and using a belt. We'll look at um, the teeth gear that's used for the belt as well as the pitch of the lead screw or threaded rod and see if we can figure out a little, using a little bit of math uh, how fast they can go and also whether you would be losing torque or not and what kind of precision you should be able to get um, not factoring in of course a little bit of backlash although we will try and look at that if we can. So let's go and have a closer look at the two things that I'm talking about and get into the details. So here we are at the bench with an assorted um, set of parts that are going to be used for various motion control projects and the items that we're talking about are things like this which is a lead screw. This is an 8mm force start lead screw. We'll talk about that when we get to the computer and we can bring up some more detailed pictures. What you have on one end is a coupler which is used to fasten to a motor so that when the motor turns, this is a stepper motor, NEMA 17 in this case, it would rotate the rod as well. And in the rotation of the rod, it would slide this brass coupling, in this case, um, along or back um, on the rod at a certain speed, depending on the rotational speed of the motor. Now, the other kind is using a belt, which is something like this. This is a GT3 belt, and what that means is the pitch of the teeth, I don't know if you can see that very well, um, I'll put a picture up anyway, but the pitch of these teeth is three millimeters. So if you had something like um, what I have here, which is a um, 20 tooth gear. So what you would do is you would normally, this is for a bigger motor, but nevertheless you would mount it on your motor and then one revolution of the motor would produce an equivalent um, pulling or yeah pulling of the belt around the teeth and introduce linear motion again on whatever you're driving. So whether it be rotational on a lead screw to produce linear motion by threading this nut up and down and that same thing applies if you're using a threaded rod um, or whether you're using a motor with a gear and you're using a belt, the net result is you're converting a rotational motion into a linear motion. Now, the number of teeth or the number of threads and starts and pitch of a lead screw will result in a certain speed based on the speed that you're driving the motor. Also, depending on the gear ratios and things, you would also get a torque um, increase or decrease depending on whether you're uh, driving the load faster for an equivalent speed of the motor or slower for the equivalent speed of the motor. And we'll look into some of those examples in a moment as well when we get on the computer. Anyway, I think that's enough on the bench. There's not really much else I can show you here except that, you know, things like the GT3 belt just wraps around here. So one rotation of the pulley would result in uh, 20 teeth effectively rotating around a single point. So let's get to the computer and we will see what this all means as far as speeds and torques and stuff like that. Okay, so now for some details of starting with the 8mm lead screw. Um, here is a typical specification and it happens to match the one that I have. So we have an 8mm lead screw with an 8mm uh, lead with a two millimeter pitch. Now what this means with the lead screw, uh, here's an example down here, is the difference between um, a standard threaded rod and a lead screw is just the 
angle of the pitch and when you have multiple starts it means you effectively have two or three or four um, or even a single depending if you've got a fine lead screw separate threads running down the rod now the pitch is irrespective of how many starts you have or how many threads are running down it is the distance between them so in this case it's the green uh, item here so you can see that even with a single start, double start, or triple start, and a four start, they're all the same pitch, which is two millimeters. What is differing is the lead. So in this first one, the pitch and the lead is the same. The second one, the lead is a bit more, and then the third triple start is a bit more, and the four start is even more. So what we have is a two millimeter pitch with an eight millimeter lead. And what that means then is with one rotation of the shaft, you get to move eight millimeters in distance. Now, if you consider that a standard stepper motor is 200 steps per revolution, then eight millimeters divided by uh, 200, so let's just say eight divided by 200, oops. because I kind of did that wrong, is 0 0.04 millimeters per step. And that doesn't account for micro-stepping. That's just full-blown 200 steps. And obviously, if you're using a 0.9 degree stepper motor, then that's going to be 2 tenths of a millimeter moved per step of the stepper motor. And if you're using um, 10 or 16 micro-steps, then obviously that's going to now be um, 0 0.002 or 0 0.004 millimeters per step of the stepper motor. So that's pretty good. Um, let's just continue with this. Now, what we have here are a number of different nut types that can also go on here. So this is the typical lead screw. Here we're showing a Dalrin nut applied to a lead screw and what it is is basically a, a special kind of plastic and this one actually has an anti-backlash capability built in. You adjust this little grub screw here uh, and what it does is it tightens up the thread so that there is no um, play and you would just tweak it just enough so that you take up all the slack but without binding it. Um, this next one here which is brass uh, it's fairly accurately machined but it does have a tiny amount of uh, backlash on it and we'll have a look at and see that on future videos. Um, this variety here that you can see actually has a fairly strong spring between one threaded piece which is the same as this and then a second threaded piece which is th um, you squished it up together thread it onto the rod and then what happens is this second piece actually takes up any slack in this. Now obviously if you do a high acceleration, apply a lot of torque, it is possible that the spring could compress uh, and you would get temporarily a slight bit of uh, lag in the movement, but typically for most applications this is sufficient, uh, so certainly for light load, to take up a lot of the slack if you want to stay with uh, metal. Now if you want to go to something more precise, of course, you have to go to something like a ball screw where you have ball bearings and things in here. Now the principle of how far traveled and all that kind of stuff and the losses are pretty much the same. Um, there are losses because of friction with one of these and if you're using um, a threaded rod there's going to be more friction. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, if you're using a ball screw because there are ball bearings then there's going to be a lot less friction. But as far as um, you know, ignoring the losses due to that, the gearing ratio is going to be what drives the main, the main torque of the motor, say it's 40 newton centimeters. Um, if you're gearing, then that can change it to be uh, a lot more torque, so a lot more load that could be moved, but at the expense of moving it slower. Or depending on how you're doing it, you know, if you're gearing up, then you can have a lot less torque or moving power but you could do it a lot faster and we'll get to that in other videos when we start talking about the motors as well. Um, in here we're just looking at how quickly can we move um, the load 
per rotation of the stepper motor. Um, now we haven't gotten to the stepper motor yet, we're just looking at the effectively the gearing. So we've got one rotation of the motor in this case is giving us a um, 8 millimeter distance move so therefore a 0 0.04 millimeter step. Uh, if you want to know what that is in inches, so that's uh, one thousandth of an inch, so 0 0.0015 of an inch um, is what is moved there. Okay, so you got about a one thou. Now, this is for a lead screw, and here's an end view of it. You can see the four separate starts on this one. Now, that's what I'm using on my um, 3D printer. All right. So considering that we're using um, a 0.4 millimeter head, like the nozzle on the, the 3D printer, that means that our positional accuracy is, worst case, 10 times better than the thickness of the, what we're trying to print. Um, and if you include micro-stepping, then it could be as much as 100 times better than what we're trying to print. So more than adequate for the accuracy. Now, we're not considering backlash yet, but as far as direct resolution, we've got more than enough. So now let's go look at a threaded rod. Right? A little bit less data here, a little bit less complicated. Uh, typically a threaded rod, uh, one of the ones that's commonly used is an M8 threaded rod. You'd buy it as stainless steel or something because it's going to have a little bit less friction. And the pitch is typically 1.25 millimeters. So if you do the math on that one, um, then you will get 1.25 is how far you will move in one revolution. So if we divide that by 200 steps, we get 0 0.006 millimeters per step. Now obviously um, if you're using a 0.9 degree stepper motor then there's going to be half that and one of the downsides of this though is your motors have to move pretty darn quick to get the equivalent speed because you're moving um, an eighth of the distance per revolution. What it will give you is technically a lot more torque. Now, because of the nature of um, this basically steel on steel, even with a little bit of lubrication, this is going to have a lot more friction. But these brass fittings, um, they're going to give you, I, I think, less friction. But assuming even if the friction is the same, we're, we're moving 8 millimeters per rotation here. We're moving 1.25 millimeters per rotation on here. Now, these 8 millimeter threaded rods, they're not designed for motion control. They're designed for basically bolting things together. So they're not going to be as precision. They may not be quite as straight. Um, they're certainly not normally ground or anything like that. But they will work at a pinch if you want, you know, if you've really got to keep your costs down. Now, if we look at these side by side, on the left we have a four start um, lead screw. And on the right, we have the 8 millimeter um, M8 threaded rod. And you can see there's quite a difference here in the pitch and the quality of the finish and things like that. So because of this increased uh, finer finish, it's going to have less friction. Right? If it was made the same way as this, it would be a little different. The other part that's different here is that this has a, tripo tri this has a trapezoidal profile to it to help in the um, movement. A threaded rod doesn't. It's got small square edges and it's actually designed to clamp and bind when you do the nut up. It's not designed for um, free motion if you like. So there's, you know, there's, there's reasons why um, even though it's slightly more expensive to go to a lead screw. And as you can see up here the resolution that you get is still more than enough um, for 3D printing or something like that when you're talking about a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, right? It's still way more than enough. Um, when you start looking at um, a threaded rod, you know, you, you, you're you basically wasting resolution because you're never going to be, even, even for the vertical Z-axis, 
um, you know, you do um, 0.2 millimeter um, layer heights, even 0.1 millimeter, and you've got almost a yeah 20 20 times more resolution than you actually need here. So you're just wasting resolution. Um, now, looking at a belt type of system, okay, this is the kind that I currently have. A lot of people will use GT2s because they have a 2 millimeter pitch versus a 3 millimeter pitch. Now, what you also will typically use with something like this, and I don't know if I have a picture of one here, is a, um, a gear on the motor with a 20 tooth on it, um, all the way around. So what you would have is you would have the belt wrapping around a pulley that's attached to the stepper motor and now what we've got in my case but we'll do the math for both of them is you have a direct relationship on the diameter of this pulley to the rotations of the stepper motor. Now because I have a GT3 belt that means each tooth is three millimeters. If the pulley has 20 teeth all the way around that means that for one rotation of the stepper motor my pulley will move 60 millimeters. Now if you've got a GT2 it would move 40 millimeters. So now, uh, and this is typically used for um, a lot of 3D printers for the X and Y direction, the Z direction often will use lead screws but the X and Y direction very often uses belts. So if you've got a 40 millimeter for a GT2 and you divide that by 200 steps, that means you're getting 0.2 millimeters. That's the best um, you can do. Now obviously micro-stepping is going to give that, um, make that a little bit better. Now, inaccuracies when you're microstepping do creep in. Uh, microstepping isn't all it's cracked out to be. It helps a lot with smooth running. It does give you um, some level of improved resolution, but it is not, um, you know, once you go beyond about 10 microsteps, you start to lose all accuracy. Uh, or at least you don't gain any extra resolution. You can get smoother running, but you also start losing torque as well. And I'll link in an article from the Gecko Drive folks that have got a really good description of how all of this comes into play. So for my GT3 belt, I will end up with 0.3 millimeters per step. So that's not very good for um, a 3D printer. That's not highly accurate. Uh, it's probably good enough in most cases but you can see why in some you know when you're using a 0.3 millimeter nozzle and you know you're not your accuracy is not even uh, 10 times better than your nozzle width and you really would want it to be uh, micro stepping as I said is going to help but it depends on how good your stepper drivers are and things like that um, now the next thing is going to be uh, speed so typical 3d printing is measured at around about, I think, uh, 50 to 150 millimeters per second. So if we want to figure out what that's going to be based on you know, how fast do our motors need to turn, then let's just write down a few notes here and we'll figure it out. So if we want to have 50 millimeters per second speed and we can move at, let's just use the GT3, um, which is 60 millimeters per revolution then if we want to be able to get 50 millimeters a second we only need to turn our motor at one revolution per second and we're already doing 60 so we actually is you know less than one revolution per second now, pretty much any stepper motor is going to be capable of doing that. If we were up at 150 millimeters um, per second, then if we're doing 60 millimeters, it's simply going to be uh, 150 divided by 60 millimeters per revolution. That means we need 2.5 revolutions per second. 
so 2.5 revolutions per second. All right, so I think that if that makes sense to you so far. I've just simplifi simplified the um, notes here. So for a GT3, 60 millimeters per revolution, um, if you want to go at the slowest speeds, 50 millimeters per second, that's less than one revolution per second. And at 150 millimeters per second, that's only two and a half revolutions per second. Um, pretty much any stepper motor is able to get that. Now the problem when you're running at such a low speed is that um, you start getting the stepping of the stepper motor starting to show up because you're running so slowly. Uh, and it's not ideal because that will get reflected in your print. Um, now, if you're using micro-stepping, that can smooth things down, um, but it doesn't actually change how quickly or how slowly, should I say, you are rotating the stepper motor and therefore not getting such a smooth um, f potential finish on your 3D printing. Um, now, I haven't done any exhaustive testing. This is just looking at the math to see what we're getting here. Now, if we're using a lead screw, then I think you'll see that the situation changes a little bit. So let's just go do the math on that. So if we want to go at the same 50 millimeters per second, then we have to um, 8 millimeters per revolution. So 50 divided by 8 means we have to rotate at 6.25 um, revolutions per second. And if we want to run at 150, then 150 divided by 8 millimeters per revolution equals 18.75. So 150 millimeters per second equals, uh, what did I say, 18.75 revolutions per second. So what do these equate to in RPM? Well, let's just do, um, huh, that one's easy, equals 60 RPM. Um, two and a half equals 150 RPM. And for the eight millimeter lead screw, which we've got 6.25 times 60, gives us 375 RPM. And the 150 equals is 1,125. In this case, we're getting fairly close to what might be the limit of some stepper motors, up at about 1,000 RPM. But considering most 3D printers that we're building, we're not building a high-end 3D printer here. We're building one that is going to be pretty accurate. And if you think about it, a lot of them don't even run at 50 millimeters per second how fast your 3D printer is going to be able to actually run is going to be dependent on how good your hot end is, um, whether you're moving your build plate or whether it's just the head that's moving. Obviously, if you're moving your build plate and you're trying to move it very fast and stop and starting it over time, if you've got a tall thing that you're trying to print, you run the risk of dislodging it. So you may have to slow things down. Now, if your build plate is big and fairly heavy, then you know in the situation where you're using a belt, you're having to apply that torque, the maximum torque that the stepper motor is able to apply, directly to the moving of the build plate. So if this is a 40 Newton centimeter uh, holding torque, I can't remember how exactly that relates to the moving capability. There is no gearing between that and the movement of the build surface and the build plate with the heater and everything else that's on there. And uh, maybe we should do a, a weigh in on how, how much weight a build plate is that's about 300 by 300. When you're using the eight millimeter lead screw, because it's effectively being geared down, so you know you can see here one revolution of this is directly translating into 60 RPA, uh, 60 millimeters of movement. One revolution of the lead screw is only resulting in eight millimeters of the lead screw. So what's happening is you're getting a torque multiplication here. Right. Assuming this direct drive, let's just call that a factor of one, then with the lead screw, you're getting um, 60 divided by 8. So 
I'm not good at math, it's seven and a half times the torque for the same speed. So if you've got a heavy build plate, you're going to be able to accelerate it um, because you're allowing the stepper motor to go much, much faster um, quite well without stalling the stepper motor. If you have a heavy build plate because it's big and you're doing direct belt drive, if you try and accelerate up to the 50 or 150 millimeters per second, um, you may find that you're stalling out your motors because you really don't have many RPMs to do anything with before you're at the speed that you're going to be able to print to. Uh, whereas with the 8mm lead screw, or you know, even better would be the threaded rod, but of course there's issues with that, you know, and, and you don't really want to get ridiculous on how many RPMs. You can see here with the 8mm lead, we're already at you know uh, 1000 RPM uh, for the faster print speed. So if you're using a 1.25 millimeter, so let's just say that's um, you know five times faster, you're up at five, 6,000 RPM. And a lot of stepper motors won't be able to do that, uh, certainly not accelerate to it very quickly. Uh, and when I say very quickly, I'm talking about you know within a few milliseconds. With the mass of the load and everything else, it just wouldn't be possible. But by using um, the lead screw, or you know, if you really want to go more accurate, a, a ball screw, then you have a much better chance of being able to move those bigger masses without um, stretching belts and various other things. So if we go and look at one of the designs, and the first one that we're building, or that I'm building, is basically this one. I haven't finished laying everything out yet, but I've already covered the video where we looked at this base build. And here's our plate. So you've got this big piece of um, plywood, and then on top of that you're going to have an aluminum 3 millimeter thick um, build plate with a heater on it and then you're going to have whatever you're actually building as well. And I'm using an 8 millimeter rod uh, lead screw here and then these are just uh, stainless steel polished rods for the bearings to move along to keep everything stable and smooth. So in the z-axis these are going to be 8 millimeter lead screws as well to raise and lower. Now gravity is going to keep this down so backlash is not so much an issue in the z-axis and then in the x-axis here um, the only thing we're moving is this fairly lightweight piece with the head on it. Um, I don't plan to have the extruder itself mounted on here. I'm going to use a Bowden tube so that will be mounted up here somewhere. So very minimal mass but the mass of this to actually accelerate if you were using a belt your acceleration would have to be uh, relatively slow to avoid um, slipping on the steps of the stepper motor I would imagine or you'd have to uh, crank up and increase the current and increase the voltage that you're using on your stepper motors obviously the amount of power that you instantaneously apply to these stepper motors um, controls how much torque you're going to get so a lot of Prusa i3 clones and things like that use a 12 volt system. What I'm planning on using is a 24 volt system. A lot of my other motion control systems even go up as high as a 48 volt. Um, even though the stepper motors themselves are basically the same, it is because of the inductance of the motors and things like that, that by using a higher voltage for the supply and using uh, a, a quality stepper motor driver, you can actually get a lot more low end torque out of these so that you can do your acceleration. Now obviously once you're up to uh, higher speeds you don't get the same amount of torque but you don't need it once you're at that speed. You just need to be able to maintain the momentum and then slow down again. And a lot of the tuning parameters of your 3D printer is what is going to control how quickly you accelerate and decelerate and how long you can remain at high speed. Now again, as I said, a lot of the issues that reduces how fast a stepper motor or 3D printer can run are not actually directly related to the stepper motor itself. The hot end, how quickly can it heat the filament as it goes through to maintain those higher print speeds? How quickly can you um, push it? The stepper motor that is driving the filament through, if you try to drive that too quickly, you may end up just stripping um, chunks out of the filament instead of driving it through to the hot end. Um, you know, so a lot of factors come into play when you start increasing the speeds. So you know, if you're still playing around in the 
uh, 50 to 100 millimeters per second, even at 150 millimeters a second, you're still easily able to do that with an 8 millimeter lead screw. Um, now, as I said, with the belt, when you're trying to do this, um, you're running at a lot lower speed in your RPMs, and that it, it can easily be done, but I can also introduce artifacts from the steps, because the stepper motor, uh, potentially at these lower speeds, for instance, will stop during its movement. It'll Because you, you apply the next pulse for the stepper motor to move to its next position, but then it holds it for a second. It's not like a DC motor where it's a linear progression all the way through. The net result of the RPM would be say 60 RPM and the speed would be 50 millimeters a second on average but between each step it's going to be um, trying to go as quickly as it can to lock into that next step position so you can actually get some artifacts showing up at the lower speeds if you're not running your stepper motors fast enough and again as I said I'll um, link in some articles from Gecko uh, uh, that covers these kind of things. Now, the only other issue really of using a lead screw, which I've actually alluded to in my first video, is the fact that there is a little bit of uh, backlash with the nuts that I'm currently using. But I intend to actually see if I can get some um, IGUS bearings with um, IGUS rods to do my 3D printer and in this case there should be a lot less backlash um, but I can also get some anti-backlash um, brass inserts like I've already shown you up here um, where is it there these these type of things so if we do get too much backlash then we can apply one of these and that should improve things now again it depends on how quickly you try to accelerate and things like that when you go to something like a core XY of course you really don't have too much choice about using threaded rods or belts. But you do have a, um, at minimum, a 2 to 1 gearing uh, ratio when you're using a Core XY, which means that you are running at twice the speed of what we calculated down here for the belt. So you, instead of 60, you're 120 and 300 RPM for the same speeds and if you had long enough belts you could even improve upon that now obviously backlash is dependent on how tight you have your belt um, and the longer the belt the more stretch there may be within that belt as well it's not a lot but it's always going to be there and you know once we start building a belt based system we will see if we can measure that somehow to show you but for now, I think uh, what I wanted to show you in this video was really what the difference is and why a threaded rod, or sorry, more specifically, a lead screw, um, is a very viable option for using um, in all of your axes on a 3D printer. Uh, because the stepper motors can get the higher speeds, especially if you use uh, higher quality ones, and RS Components has been kind enough to send me uh, a bunch of stepper motors um, and these are 0.9 degree stepper motors so uh, I'm not sure which one of the two machines I'm going to use them in I'm probably going to use them in the Core XY but I also have a set of 1.8 degree stepper motors as well and some uh, fairly good stepper driver um, using an ST micro controller board which we will try with this that should be able to give us some good control of the motors and um, we'll see how well in reality it is. Um, it might be slightly noisier because it's metal shaft rods versus belts but I think the higher RPMs it may actually be quieter on the motors versus the other mechanical parts. Anyway, um, that's it for now. I didn't want to make this too long and it's already um, about half an hour or just over half an hour long. I think that's about it. So if you got anything good out of the video just give me a thumbs up if you didn't then don't but I'll see you in the next video when we start building a bit more of the 3d printer thank you